At the start of solo leveling, Sung Jin Woo, along with other hunters, enters a large dungeon and encounters multiple large statues that start killing left and right. Obviously, these statues aren't just any regular old monsters. Just like this isn't a normal D rank dungeon. So what are these statues? And what is the true purpose of this dungeon? Well, as for the statues, there are mainly two important ones to focus on. The first is the statue sitting on the throne, and the one Jin Wu asked everyone to bow down to. Let's call that one the Statue of God. The other important one is the hooded statue with the angel-like wings on its back, holding up a stone slab with what seemed like to be rules written on it. This one is none other than the architect itself. Those two statues aren't like the other starter bosses in other series. They're actually pretty important to the story later on. Of course, there will be some spoilers from here on out, so be careful if you don't want to be spoiled. I'll start first with what the double dungeon really is. It's actually called the Cartanon Temple and was essentially the base of operations for the architect, who designed and moderated the system that gives Jin Wu the ability to level up and inherit the powers of the original Shadow Monarch, Ashborn. The dungeon served as a test for Jin Wu, which is why he was offered the chance to become a player after he had completed it the first time. Then, after reaching level 100, Jin Wu returned for his final test against the Architect, who planned for Ashborn to return there and take control of Jin Wu. As for the statues, most of them were just puppets of the Architect. However, the Statue of God was different. It was the strongest of the Architect's creations and essentially served as the dungeon boss the first time Jin Wu entered the temple. There is a significant reason why the Statue of God is designed to be the strongest puppet, and that's because it's actually modeled off of the Absolute Being a near replica of the one who is once the highest being in existence. You see, the tablet the architect holds in the double dungeon, which supposedly had the rules on it, was a smaller replica of the back of the giant throne the absolute being used to sit on. Those were the rules its creations had to follow. The rules consisted of worship the god, where everyone worshipped the absolute being. Then praise the god, where everyone let out outcries of war for the absolute being. Prove your piety where everyone pledged their allegiance with their blood and lives to the absolute being. Then lastly, those who disobey the law will not be able to return alive. Those were the same rules on the tablet Jin Wu read off of the architect. Of course, when Jin Wu returned to the double dungeon, the architect casually destroyed the stone slab in its hands, stating that it doesn't mean anything anymore. Perhaps that's because the absolute being is no longer alive, or that those rules only mattered during Jin Wu's first time in the dungeon. The architect himself was one of the most capable mages working under a king back during the time both the sovereigns and rulers were attempting to establish their powers on earth through humans. Unfortunately, Ashborn possessed powers too great that they could not find suitable hosts. That's when the architect came to Ashborn with a proposal to find him a suitable vessel. He assured Ashborn of his assurance and simply asked for an imperishable body in return. So, with the system the architect designed, he searched high and low for someone talented enough and sent to magical power. Someone who had great physical power, superiority, and a great mentality. Someone who could meet Ashborn's powers. It was a difficult search. Eventually, the architect did find someone who bested his system and exceeded his expectations. Sung Jin Wu, who was always the closest to death, yet continued to survive. The architect directly opposed it. Yet, Ashborn chose Jin Wu. You could say the reason why the secret quest in the double dungeon was called Courage of the Weak is perhaps a reference to being a quest specifically for Jin Wu, who was the weakest E-Rank hunter, but also the most courageous. The architect ended up creating a game-like system using Ashborn's power, which fueled Jin Wu's amusement and allowed him to gain more powers of the Shadow Monarch, level by level. It's also why the system was so insistent on getting Jin Wu to accept constantly repeating he was running out of time and eventually saying he'd die if he didn't accept. Of course, the architect did expect Ashborn to descend into the human world through Jin Wu to join the other monarchs to fight the rulers, which is why he was shocked when Jin Wu woke up in the second trip to the double dungeon and not Ashborn. When Jin Wu returned to the temple at level 100, the architect promised to tell him everything if he was still standing up for the test. Since it was his final test, 
The architect prevented Jin Wu from using his job specific skills, like his shadows, to fight off the puppets and the architect later. Of course, Jin Wu even surpassed the architect's expectations and beat him before time was even up. Like this man had two minutes left. The architect then allowed Jin Wu to view a past memory of Ashbourne and his battles up to his betrayal and the arrival of the rulers to offer peace. But then Jin Wu woke up and saved everyone who had come to rescue him by knocking down the architect in one hit. Jin Wu questioned what had been done to him due to the black heart and the architect was shocked when Jin Wu was the one who regained consciousness even with the black heart inside of him. That's when the architect realized that the shadow monarch had betrayed him and the other monarchs. Jin Wu knew he didn't have all the answers yet and threatened the architect for more. However, the architect then had statues start to close in on everyone, suggesting his puppets would keep going even if he died. The architect really tried to make it seem like it would be a bad idea to kill him. Like maybe Jin Wu would return to being an e rank hunter. Jin Wu did consider that, but was now fairly certain that the system wouldn't fall apart even if the architect disappeared. Realizing Jin Wu had called his bluffs, the architect then attempted to use the system to forcefully do something to Jin Wu. But he was then suddenly completely locked out of the system by Ashbourne, who no longer had any intention of taking over Jin Wu. And so, Jin Wu states that after thinking about it for so long, he decides he would just devour the system entirely before destroying the architect. As he falls apart, the architect has a prophecy for Jin Wu. When the pillars of fire holding the heavens are raised, there will be an inevitable death approaching his way. And those were the last words of the architect, words that reveal their meaning later on in the story. As we see though, the double dungeon and the architect play key roles in Jin Wu's development into becoming the shadow monarch. The double dungeon ultimately served as a testing ground and the architect's final resting place. The architect himself helped craft and moderate the system that allowed Jin Wu to be able to attain the powers of the shadow monarch. But yeah, without the architect, perhaps the shadow monarch, Ashborn, might not have been able to descend into the human world or even transfer his power into Jin Wu. The story as we know it and now have happened, and Jin Wu might have remained the weakest E rank hunter. Let me know what y'all think about the architect in the comments though, and as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe. I'm gonna try to have some more solo level content soon too, but you can check out some of my other videos here for now if you want. Peace.